this is video number two. Um, I just realized I forgot to say in video number one, um, they had given us angle, they had given us this angle, this angle, and then this side over here. They had given us angle, angle, side. Okay, so with, um, we were given angle, angle, side, which is definitely a, a way that we can prove that our triangles are congruent. You remember in geometry? Um, and then that angle, angle, side is a good, um, a good situation where we want to use the law of sines. So I should have said that in the first one, but now I have. Okay, so in this one, the first thing I want to do, we're moving on to triangle two, is I'm going to sketch something, label A, B, C, however you want to label it. This is 42, and then so little a across from here is 20, little b over here is 24. And now the first thing that you should notice on this one, um, and that's why I should have said this the previous one, but the first thing I notice is that I've got the bad word. This is angle, side, side. Okay, you cannot say angle side side because it's a bad word. You can't say side side angle because it's the bad word backwards. No bad words. Um, so this one, this one is what we call the ambiguous case. Okay, and um, in this one, Miss Deloach has a um, a three step thing to check. Okay, so first of all, is it the bad word? Yes. The second thing, is it an acute angle? Yes. The angle that we know is acute. The third thing is that is the, the side opposite the angle, is it smaller than the other side that we know? And in this case, yes. So whenever we see that scenario, when all three of those things are met, um, let me write it down. The first step, what was it? Number one was bad word. Number two was acute. Okay, we've answered yes, we answered yes. The third thing was, is the opposite smaller than the adjacent. And if we answer yes to all three of those things, um, she would have her, her kids put a little red flag. So there's a green flag, whatever. Um, and, and that tells you that there's either going to be two triangles or there's going to be no triangles. So check my ambiguous case video if that doesn't make sense. Um, so in this one, here we go. Now, um, so we're gonna play, pay attention, we're gonna be careful. It's either gonna give us zero or two. So I'm going to come along and set it up. Sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over B. Okay, so then I have that sine of, and basically I just need to multiply both sides by 24. So sine of B is equal to 24 sine of 42 all over 20. Okay, um, that's what it was at. It was 24. Can you see what I'm, there we go. 24 sine of 42 all over 20. And now, don't forget, I always do second sine of that answer. And so I just found that angle B, and I'm gonna call this B sub one, is approximately 53.4 degrees. Um, and the reason I'm calling it B sub one is we had, we had already flagged this one. If it gives us one triangle, when all three of these things are met and it gives us one triangle, it actually is gonna give us two. Um, so if you remember from the first part of our notes, um, we could have, this was angle, side, side, gave us two scenarios. Um, so here was this angle that was congruent, here's that side, this side, this side. Is, so I've got triangle KOH, I've got triangle KOS. Um, and if this were X, this would be x because that's an isosceles triangle, and that means that this one right here is 180 minus x. So if we have two triangles, we're gonna find that one of them is the acute angle, and the other triangle, that would be triangle KOS, has an acute angle here, and then the obtuse triangle KOH, and those two angles are supplements to each other. Okay, so what we wanna do is we say, okay, well here's that B1, B sub two, would be the supplement to that. So B sub two is 180, oops, sorry, 180 minus that answer. And so it's about 126.6. Okay, and that is possible, that does, we can, and I can always verify if I, if I find the second and I'm not sure, find the second angle, I'm not sure it really gives me a second triangle. I need to make sure that the angle that I already have plus this angle, still leaves room for a third angle um, so that I actually have a triangle because they, they have to add up to 180. So I can say, um, well, let's see, one that angle, sorry, that answer, 
Let me do this again. Okay. That answer plus the 42 that was already there, that is still smaller than 180. Okay, so that lets us know that there is room for an angle C. And actually, we can find C2 because it would be one of the, one of the angles would be 42. The other would be this. And I add those. So then 180 minus that answer, C2 would have to be 11.4 degrees. Uh, let's go back and find C1 real fast. Uh, that's big C1. So then I had a 180, I subtracted by that 42, and then I found that, um, that my first B, my B1, was 53.4. So when I subtract that out, that leaves 84.6. So you'll notice on this particular triangle, we have two distinct triangles. This one is the acute angle, the, the acute triangle, and this one is the obtuse triangle. So then the next thing we need to do is we need to find um, little C1 and little C2. I don't know why I had to say it like that. It, it is what it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this sine of, sine of A over A, and I'm going to set this equal to well, sine of C over C, and let's do sine of, of C1. So sine of C1 over little C1. Okay, so then I have 20... 20 sine of 84.6, and then that gets divided by sine of, can you see what I'm doing, sine of 42. Okay, and then that little C1 is about 29.757. Um, now, granted, this may not be exact because we rounded here, um, but if you're close to mine, really and truly what we should have done is we should have stored our values and so that we have, we're using exact until the very end. Um, if you remember, the, the Casio can use this button to store something. So I would have found that angle and then stored it so then I can keep everything exact. I'm not going to go back and do that. Okay, so C, little c1 is about 29.757 centimeters. And then I need to find little c2. So it would be sine of 42 over 20 is equal to sine of, well, little big C2, 11.4 over little C, that's a little C2. It's hard to tell my bigs and my littles, but okay. So basically that's that exact same thing, except instead of the 84.6, I now have 11.4. And so I find that little C2 is about 5.908. Okay, and so on a, on a problem like this, I might not tell you that you needed to come up with two answers in each blank, but you do, okay, because this is the ambiguous case, and it had two distinct triangles. Check out video number three for the next one.